Real-time strategy (RTS) is a subgenre of strategy video games where the game does not progress incrementally in turns. In an RTS, the participants position and maneuver units and structures under their control to secure areas of the map and or destroy their opponent's assets. In a typical RTS, it is possible to create additional units and structures during the course of a game. This is generally limited by a requirement to expend accumulated resources. These resources are in turn garnered by controlling special points on the map and or possessing certain types of units and structures devoted to this purpose. More specifically, the typical game of the RTS genre features resource gathering, base building, in-game technological development and indirect control of units. The term, ''real-time strategy'' was coined by Brett Sperry to market Dune 2 in the early 1990s. The tasks a player must perform to succeed at an RTS can be very demanding, and complex user interfaces have evolved to cope with the challenge. Some features have been borrowed from desktop environments, for example, the technique of clicking and dragging to select all units under a given area. Though some game genres share conceptual and gameplay similarities with the RTS template, recognized genres are generally not subsumed as RTS games. For instance, city building games, construction and management simulations, and games of the real-time tactics variety are generally not considered to be real-time strategy. Topic: History Origins The genre that is recognized today as «real-time strategy» emerged as a result of an extended period of evolution and refinement. Games that are today sometimes perceived as ancestors of the real-time strategy genre were never marketed or designed as such at the original date of publication. As a result, designating «early real-time strategy» Titles is problematic because such games are being held up to modern standards. The genre initially evolved separately in the United Kingdom, Japan, and North America, afterward gradually merging into a unified worldwide tradition. Ars Technica traces the genre's roots back to Utopia 1981, citing it as the birth of a genre, with a real-time element that was virtually unheard of, thus making it arguably the earliest ancestor of the real-time strategy genre." According to Ars Technica, Utopia was a turn-based strategy game with hybrid elements that ran, "...in real time but events happened on a regular turn-based cycle." According to Brett Weiss, Utopia is often cited as, "...the first real-time strategy game." According to Matt Barton and Bill Logaitis, Utopia, "...helped set the template," for the genre, but has, more in common with SimCity than it does with Dune 2 and later RTS games." Barton also cites Citron Masters 1982, saying it was, "...one of the first, first real-time strategy games." On the other hand, Scott Sharkey of 1UP argues that, while Citron Masters "...attempted real-time strategy," it was, "...much more tactical than strategic," due to the inability to construct units or manage resources." Byte in December 1982 published as an Apple II type in program Cosmic Conquest. The winner of the magazine's annual game contest, the author described it as a "...single-player game of real-time action and strategic decision-making." The magazine described it as "...a real-time space strategy game." The game has elements of resource management and wargaming. In the United Kingdom, the earliest real time strategy games are Stonkers by John Gibson, published in 1983 by Imagine Software for the ZX Spectrum, and Nether Earth for ZX Spectrum in 1987. In North America, the oldest game retrospectively classified as real-time strategy by several sources is The Ancient Art of War 1984, designed by Everywhere's Dave and Barry Murray, followed by The Ancient Art of War at Sea in 1987. In Japan, the earliest is Bokusuka Wars an early strategy RPG or simulation RPG. The game revolves around the player leading an army across a battlefield against enemy forces in real time while recruiting, spawning soldiers along the way, for which it is considered by Ray Barnholt of 1UP.com to be an early prototype real-time strategy game. 
Another early title with real-time strategy elements is Sega's Gain Ground 1988, a strategy action game that involved directing a set of troops across various enemy-filled levels. Technosoft's Herzog 1988 is regarded as a precursor to the real-time strategy genre, being the predecessor to Herzog's Way and somewhat similar in nature, though primitive in comparison. IGN cites Herzog's Way, released for the Sega Mega Drive Genesis home console in 1989 as arguably the first RTS game ever", and it is often cited as, "...the first real-time strategy game", according to AR's Technica. It combines traditional strategy gameplay with fully real-time, fast-paced, arcade-style action gameplay, featuring a split-screen two-player mode where both players are in action simultaneously and there are no pauses while decisions are taken, forcing players to think quickly while on the move. In Herzog's Way, though the player only controls one unit, the manner of control foreshadowed the point-and-click mechanic of later games. Scott Sharkey of 1UP argues that it introduced much of the genre conventions, including unit construction and resource management, with the control and destruction of bases being an important aspect of the game, as were the economic, production aspects of those bases. Herzog's Way is credited by 1UP as a landmark that defined the genre and as the progenitor of all modern real-time strategy games." Chuck Sperry cited Herzog's Way as an influence on Dune 2. Notable as well are early games like Mega Low Mania by Sensible Software and Supremacy also called Overlord 1990. Although these two lacked direct control of military units, they both offered considerable control of resource management and economic systems. In addition, Mega Low Mania has advanced technology trees that determine offensive and defensive prowess. Another early 1988 game, Carrier Command by Real-Time Games, involved real-time responses to events in the game, requiring management of resources and control of vehicles. The early game Sim Ant by Maxis 1991 had resource gathering, and controlling an attacking army by having them follow a lead unit. However, it was with the release of Dune 2 from Westwood Studios 1992 that real-time strategy became recognized as a distinct genre of video games. 1992–1998 Seminal titles Although real-time strategy games have an extensive history, some titles have served to define the popular perception of the genre and expectations of real-time strategy titles more than others, in particular the games released between 1992 and 1998 by Westwood Studios and Blizzard Entertainment. Drawing influence from Herzog's Way, Populous, Eye of the Beholder, and the Macintosh user interface, Westwood's Dune II, The Building of a Dynasty 1992 featured all the core concepts and mechanics of modern real-time strategy games that are still used today, such as using the mouse to move units, and gathering resources, and as such served as the prototype for later real-time strategy games. According to its co-designer and lead programmer, Joe Bostick, a benefit over Herzog's way is that we had the advantage of a mouse and keyboard. This greatly facilitated precise player control, which enabled the player to give orders to individual units. The mouse, and the direct control it allowed, was critical in making the RTS genre possible. The success of Dune 2 encouraged several games which became influential in their own right. Warcraft, Orcs and Humans 1994 achieved great prominence upon its release, owing in part to its use of a fantasy setting and also to its depiction of a wide variety of buildings such as farms which approximated a full fictitious society, not just a military force. Command & Conquer, as well as Command & Conquer, Red Alert, became the most popular early RTS games. These two games contended with Warcraft 2, Tides of Darkness after its release in late 1995. Total Annihilation, released by Cavedog Entertainment in 1997, introduced 3D units and terrain and focused on huge battles that emphasized macromanagement over micromanagement. It featured a streamlined interface that would influence many RTS games in later years. Age of Empires, released by Ensemble Studios in 1997 tried to put a game in a slower pace, combining elements of civilization with the real-time strategy concept by introducing ages of technologies. In 1998, Blizzard released the game StarCraft, which became an international phenomenon and is still played in large professional leagues to this day. Collectively, all of these games defined the genre, providing the de facto benchmark against which new real-time strategy games are measured.
Topic refinement and transition to 3D The real-time strategy genre has been relatively stable since 1995. Additions to the genre's concept in newer games tend to emphasize more of the basic RTS elements higher unit caps, more unit types, larger maps, etc. Rather than innovations to the game concept, new games generally focus on refining aspects of successful predecessors. As the Paragon example of gameplay refinement, Cavedog's acclaimed Total Annihilation from 1997 distilled the core mechanics of Command and & Conquer, and introduced the first 3D units and terrain in real-time strategy games. The Age of Empires idea was refined further by Stainless Steel Studios' Empire Earth in 2001. GSC Game World's Cossacks, European Wars series took the genre in a different direction, bringing population caps into the tens of thousands. Dungeon Keeper 1997, Populous, The Beginning 1998, Jeff Wayne's The War of the Worlds 1998, Warzone 2100 1999, Machines 1999, Homeworld 1999, Honor and Freedom 1999, and Dark Reign 2 2000 were among the first completely 3D real-time strategy titles. Homeworld was notable in that it featured a 3D environment in space, therefore allowing movement in every direction, a feature which its semi-sequel, Homeworld Cataclysm 2000 continued to build upon adding features such as waypoints. Homeworld 2, released in 2003, streamlined movement in the 360 degrees 3D environment. Furthermore, Machines, which was also released in 1999 and featured a nearly 100% 3D environment, attempted to combine the RTS genre with a first-person shooter genre although it was not a particularly successful title. These games were followed by a short period of interest in experimental strategy games such as Allegiance 2000. Jeff Wayne's The War of the Worlds was notable for being one of the few completely nonlinear RTS games ever. It is only in approximately 2002 that 3D real-time strategy became the standard, with both Warcraft 3 2002 and Ensemble Studios Age of Mythology 2002 being built on a full 3D game engine. Kohan, Immortal Sovereigns introduced classic wargame elements, such as supply lines to the genre. Battle Realms 2001 was another full 3D game, but had limited camera views. The move from 2D to 3D has been criticized in some cases. Issues with controlling the camera and placement of objects have been cited as problems. Relatively few genres have emerged from or in competition with real time strategy games, although real time tactics, a superficially similar genre, emerged around 1995. In 1998, Activision attempted to combine the real-time strategy and first-person shooter genres in Battlezone, while in 2002 Rage Games Limited attempted this with the Hostile Waters games. Later variants have included Natural Selection, a game modification based on the Half-Life engine, and the free software Tremulous, Unvanquished. Savage, The Battle for New Earth combined the RPG and RTS elements in an online game. Topic: Specialization and evolution. A few games have experimented with diversifying map design, which continues to be largely two-dimensional even in 3D engines. Earth 2150 2000 allowed units to tunnel underground, effectively creating a dual-layer map. Three-layer orbit surface underground maps were introduced in Metal Fatigue. In addition, units could even be transported to entirely separate maps, with each map having its own window in the user interface. Three Kingdoms, Fate of the Dragon 2001 offered a simpler model, the main map contains locations that expand into their own maps. In these examples, however, gameplay was essentially identical regardless of the map layer in question. Dragon Shard 2005 emphasized its dual layer maps by placing one of the game's two main resources in each map, making exploration and control of both maps fundamentally valuable. Some games borrowing from the real-time tactics RTT template have moved toward an increased focus on tactics while downplaying traditional resource management in which designated units collect the resources used for producing further units or buildings. Titles like Warhammer 40,000, Dawn of War 2004, Star Wars, Empire at War 2006, and Company of Heroes 2006 replace the traditional resource gathering model with a strategic control point system, in which control over strategic points yields construction, reinforcement points. Ground Control 2000 was the first such game to replace individual units with 
squads. Others are moving away from the traditional real-time strategy game model with the addition of other genre elements. One example is Sins of a Solar Empire 2008, released by Ironclad Games, which mixes elements of grand-scale stellar empire building games like Master of Orion with real-time strategy elements. Another example is indie game Akron 2011, which incorporates time travel as a game mechanic, allowing a player to send units forward or backward in time. A specific genre of strategy video games referred to as multiplayer online battle arena (MOBA) that originated as a subgenre of real-time strategy gained popularity in the 2010s as a form of electronic sports, encompassing games such as The Defense of the Ancients (2003), mod for Warcraft 3, its Valve-developed sequel Dota 2 (2013). League of Legends 2009 and Heroes of the Storm 2015 Topic Gameplay In a typical real-time strategy game the screen is divided into a map area displaying the game world and terrain units and buildings and an interface overlay containing command and production controls and often a radar or minimap Overview of the entire map. The player is usually given an isometric perspective of the world, or a free roaming camera from an aerial viewpoint for modern 3D games. Players mainly scroll the screen and issue commands with the mouse, and may also use keyboard shortcuts. In most real time strategy games, especially the earliest ones, the gameplay is generally fast paced and requires very quick reflexes. For this reason, the amount of violence in some games makes RTS games close to action games in terms of gameplay. Gameplay generally consists of the player being positioned somewhere in the map with a few units or a building that is capable of building other units, buildings. Often, but not always, the player must build specific structures to unlock more advanced units in the tech tree. Often, but not always, RTS games require the player to build an army ranging from small squads of no more than two units, to literally hundreds of units and using them to either defend themselves from a virtual form of human wave attack or to eliminate enemies who possess bases with unit production capacities of their own. Occasionally, RTS games will have a preset number of units for the player to control and do not allow building of additional ones. Resource gathering is commonly the main focus of the RTS games, but other titles of the genre place higher gameplay significance to the how units are used in combat Z, Steel Soldiers for example, awards credits for territory captured rather than gathered resources, the extreme example of which are games of the real-time tactical genre. Some titles impose a ceiling on the number simultaneous troops, which becomes a key gameplay consideration, a significant example being StarCraft, while other titles have no such unit cap. Micromanagement and macromanagement Micromanagement deals with a player's constant need to manage and maintain individual units and resources on a fine scale. On the other hand, macromanagement refers to a player's management of economic expansion and large-scale strategic maneuvering, allowing the player time to think and consider possible solutions. Micromanagement involves the use of combat tactics involved in the present, whereas macromanagement considers the greater scale of the game in an attempt to predict the future. Topic criticism of gameplay Because of their generally faster paced nature and in some cases a smaller learning curve, real-time strategy games have surpassed the popularity of turn-based strategy computer games. In the past, a common criticism was to regard real-time strategy games as cheap imitations of turn-based strategy games, arguing that real-time strategy games had a tendency to devolve into click fests in which the player who was faster with the mouse generally won, because they could give orders to their units at a faster rate. The common retort is that success involves not just fast clicking, but also the ability to make sound decisions under time pressure. The clickfest argument is also often voiced alongside a button babysitting criticism, which pointed out that a great deal of game time is spent either waiting and watching for the next time a production button could be clicked, or rapidly alternating between different units and buildings, clicking their respective button. A third common criticism is that real time gameplay often degenerates into rushes, where the players try to gain the advantage and subsequently defeat the opponent as quickly in the game as possible, preferably before the opposition is capable of successfully reacting. 
For example, the original Command and Conquer gave birth to the now common tank rush tactic, where the game outcome is often decided very early on by one player gaining an initial advantage in resources and producing large amounts of a relatively powerful but still quite cheap unit, which is thrown at the opposition before they have had time to establish defenses or production. Although this strategy has been criticized for encouraging overwhelming force over strategy and tactics, defenders of the strategy argue that they're simply taking advantage of the strategies utilized, and some argue that it is a realistic representation of warfare. One of the most infamous versions of a rush is the Zergling Rush from the real-time strategy game StarCraft, where the Zerg player would morph one of their starting workers or the first one produced into a spawning pool immediately and use all of their resources to produce Zerglings, attacking once they have enough to overwhelm any early defense. In fact, the term Zerging has become synonymous with rushing. A fourth criticism of the RTS genre is the importance of skill over strategy in real-time strategy games. The manual dexterity and ability to multitask and divide one's attention is often considered the most important aspect to succeeding at the RTS genre. According to Troy Dunaway, former Westwood developer who has also worked on Command & Conquer 3, Tiberium Wars, a player controls hundreds of units, dozens of buildings and many different events that are all happening simultaneously. There is only one player, and he can only pay attention to one thing at a time. Expert players can quickly flip between many different tasks, while casual gamers have more problems with this. Topic: <tactics>, Tactics versus strategy. Real-time strategy games have been criticized for an overabundance of tactical considerations when compared to the amount of strategic gameplay found in such games. According to Chris Taylor, lead designer of Supreme Commander, he said, my first attempt at visualizing RTSs in a fresh and interesting new way was my realizing that although we call this genre real-time strategy, it should have been called real-time tactics with a dash of strategy thrown in." Taylor then posits his own game as having surpassed this mold by including additional elements of broader strategic scope. In general terms, military strategy refers to the use of a broad arsenal of weapons, including diplomatic, informational, military, and economic resources, whereas military tactics is more concerned with short term goals such as winning an individual battle. In the context of strategy video games, however, the difference is often reduced to the more limited criteria of either a presence or absence of base building and unit production. In an article for Gamasutra, Nathan Toronto criticizes real-time strategy games for too often having only one valid means of victory—attrition—comparing them unfavorably to real-time tactics games. Players' awareness that the only way for them to win or lose is militarily makes them unlikely to respond to gestures of diplomacy. The result is that the winner of a real-time strategy game is too often the best tactician rather than the best strategist. Troy Goodfellow counters this by saying that the problem is not that real-time strategy games are lacking in strategy he says attrition is a form of strategy, rather it is that they too often have the same strategy, produce faster than you consume. He also states that building and managing armies is the conventional definition of real time strategy, and that it is unfair to make comparisons with other genres. In an article for GameSpy, Mark Walker criticizes real time strategy games for their lack of combat tactics, suggesting real time tactics games as a more suitable substitute. He also says that developers need to begin looking outside the genre for new ideas in order for strategy games to continue to be successful in the future. Turn-based versus real-time A debate has emerged between fans of real-time strategy and turn-based strategy and related genres based on the merits of the real-time and turn-based systems. Some titles attempt to merge the two systems, for example, the role-playing game Fallout uses turn-based combat and real-time gameplay, while the real-time strategy games Homeworld, Rise of Nations, and the games of the Total War series allow the player to pause the game and issue orders. Additionally, the Total War series has a combination of a turn-based strategy map with a real-time battle map. Another example of a game combining both turn-based game and real-time strategy is The Lord of the Rings, The Battle for Middle-earth 2 which allows players, in a «War of the Ring» game, to play a turn-based strategy game, but also battle each other in real time. <laughs> On consoles 
Despite Herzog's Way, a console game, laying the foundations for the real-time strategy genre, RTS games never gained popularity on consoles like they did on the PC platform. Real-time strategy games made for video game consoles have been consistently criticized due to their control schemes, as the PC's keyboard and mouse are considered to be superior to a console's gamepad for the genre. Thus, RTS games for home consoles have been met with mixed success. Scott Sharkey of 1UP notes that Herzog's Way had already "...offered a nearly perfect solution to the problem by giving the player direct control of a single powerful unit and near autonomy for everything else." and is surprised, "...that more console RTS games aren't designed with this kind of interface in mind from the ground up, rather than imitating PC control schemes. That just doesn't work very well with a controller." Some handheld consoles like Napoleon video game on the GBA uses a similar solution. However, Halo Wars, which was released in 2009 for the Xbox 360, generated generally positive reviews, achieved an 82% critic average on aggregate web sites, and sold over 1 million copies. According to IGN, the gameplay lacks the traditional RTS concepts of limited resources and resource gathering and lacks multiple buildings. Topic graphics Total Annihilation 1997 was the first real-time strategy game to utilize true 3D units, terrain, and physics in both rendering and in gameplay. For instance, the missiles in Total Annihilation travel in real time in simulated 3D space, and they can miss their target by passing over or under it. Similarly, missile-armed units in Earth 2150 are at a serious disadvantage when the opponent is on high ground because the missiles often hit the cliffside, even in the case when the attacker is a missile-armed helicopter. Homeworld, Warzone 2100 and Machines all released in 1999 advanced the use of fully 3D environments in real-time strategy titles. In the case of Homeworld, the game is set in space, offering a uniquely exploitable 3D environment in which all units can move vertically in addition to the horizontal plane. However, the near-industry-wide switch to full 3D was very gradual and most real-time strategy titles, including the first sequels to Command & Conquer, initially used isometric 3D graphics made by pre-rendered 3D tiles. Only in later years did these games begin to use true 3D graphics and gameplay, making it possible to rotate the view of the battlefield in real time. Spring is a good example of the transformation from semi 3D to full 3D game simulations. It is an open source project which aims to give a total annihilation game play experience in three dimensions. The most ambitious use of full 3D graphics was realized in Supreme Commander, where all projectiles, units and terrain were simulated in real time, taking full advantage of the UI's zoom feature, which allowed cartographic-style navigation of the 3D environment. This led to a number of unique gameplay elements, which were mostly obscured by the lack of computing power available in 2007, at the release date. Japanese game developers Nippon Ichi and Vanillaware worked together on Grim Grimoire, a PlayStation 2 title released in 2007, which features hand-drawn animated 2D graphics. From 2010, real-time strategy games more commonly incorporated physics engines, such as Havoc, in order to increase realism experienced in gameplay. A modern real-time strategy game that uses a physics engine is Ensemble Studios' Age of Empires III, released on October 18, 2005, which used the Havoc Game Dynamics SDK to power its real-time physics. Company of Heroes is another real-time strategy game that uses realistically modeled physics as a part of gameplay, including fully destructible environments. Tournaments. RTS World tournaments have been held for both StarCraft and WarCraft 3 since their 1998 and 2002 releases. The games have been so successful that some players have earned over $200,000 at the WarCraft Third World Championships. In addition, hundreds of StarCraft 2 tournaments are held yearly, as it is becoming an increasingly popular branch of eSports. Notable tournaments include MLG, GSL, and DreamHack. RTS tournaments are especially popular in South Korea. See also List of real-time strategy video games